Good evening. I'm Senator Ray, and this is the Ray of Hope Show. Welcome to the Ray of Hope Show. Tonight you'll be watching episode number five, but you can also see episodes number one through four on live stream or on YouTube. Episode number one, we talked about Nosy's Law. Nosy is an elephant, still is an elephant, who was performing in circuses for over 30 years, I think even 40 years. And the cruelty that elephants and other wild animals go through to perform for our entertainment is just disheartening. So I was very pleased to uh, have advocated for and sponsored when I was in the Senate, Nosy's Law, which for the first time in the nation, a state will ban wild animals or elephants from the cruelty of, uh, of circuses. Episode number two was about Desmond's Law. Desmond Law, uh, Desmond's Law, will allow law students from Rutgers University School of Law and Seton University, Seton Hall University School of Law to appear in court to be advocates for animals in animal cruelty cases. Right now, the animals who have been subjected to very serious uh, cruelty, they have no voice in court. But now, uh, when we pass, if, with your help, if you uh, go to our, our website of the Lesniak Institute, uh, thelesniakinstitute.com. You can engage in our advocacy. And one of the things that you can watch in previous episode uh, will be about Desmond's Law, which will give animals a voice in court. Episode number three was a very, very wonderful honor for me to be able to have as the guest on the Ray of Hope show uh, the first lady of the state of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy. Uh, Tammy Murphy has advocated for uh, women's uh, health uh, causes and the environment well before she became uh, First Lady, well before uh, Governor Murphy uh, became governor. Uh, so she's been a forceful advocate, and we will hear from her uh, as she is able to uh, use the pulpit of being First Lady uh, to advance uh, the causes of women's health and for the environment. Episode number four is another treat. Uh, we will have the Senate president, Steve Sweeney, uh, who will talk about his path to progress. Uh, Senate President Sweeney had, has established a task force. I'm honored and was honored to be on it and part of it that will put forth and has put forth um, reforms in government that will make New Jersey more affordable. Uh, that's one of the most important things that all of our viewers uh, uh, will be uh, certainly concerned about uh, because New Jersey does have an affordability problem and we must do something about it and we must do it now and Senate President Sweeney will talk about it and again you can join in uh, to join the effort uh, to make New Jersey more affordable. But tonight Tonight we'll be talking about the Lesniak Institute for American Leadership, and we will hear from its director, Sarah Mack. Um, I formed the, uh, the Institute a little more than one year ago uh, to be an advocate uh, for the causes that I have fought for my entire legislative career. So um, Sarah will be talking about what we've already done and what we have planned to do, and you can, again, Find out more about the Lesniak Institute by going on the lesniakinstitute.com. Uh, Sarah will talk about um, uh, our forum on gun violence, um, our co-sponsorship with the Elizabeth Board of Education of the Laramie Project, a play put on by students um, to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the brutal killing uh, out west of a young, uh, a young man uh, who was killed and beaten to death because he was gay. And that's, that's the only reason why that tragedy happened. Sarah will also be talking about 
the, um, the Humane State License Plate Contest, where hundreds of students throughout New Jersey designed a license plate um, that will be the winner, uh, will soon be available for your purchase to put on your car uh, to show that you're an advocate uh, for humane practices, ending cruelty to animals, preserving their very existence on the face of the earth. So we cover a lot of subjects, and what we're trying to do here on the Ray of Hope show and on the Lesniak Institute for American Leadership is to get people active to advocate on behalf of what they believe in so that they can turn their passion into action. So stay tuned for the Ray of Hope show. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub. With health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy. Here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Panna Pinto Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521 9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Welcome back to the Ray of Hope show. In this segment, we'll be discussing the Lesniak Institute for American Leadership. What the Institute does is to promote advocacy, advocacy for causes that you would be uh, interested in helping elected officials like me or anyone else um, get behind and change the world to, um, to make it a better place for all of us. And on this segment, we'll be talking to Sarah Mack. Sarah is the director of the Lesniak Institute for American Leadership. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for so, having me. So let's start with who you are. Okay? Sure thing. So what 
uh, interested you to, uh, to join the Lesniak Institute? Well, actually, this is my dream job. Oh, um, right. There really oh, is nice. no... nice. You're not just saying that because <laughs> I'm your boss, are you? Of course not. Okay, Never. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I love about this job is there's no mundaneness, there's no repetitiveness, there's something new every single day. Mm. Um, and I get to follow my own passions um, through advocacy of these causes, which happen to be my own causes that I'm passionate about also. Oh, oh wonderful. So, uh, and what... So where, you came from Kane University. I did. As a matter of fact, the, the Lesniak Institute is, um, is headquartered at Kane University. Yes. And what did you do at Kane University that advocated for these types of causes that you believe in? Sure. So I was a huge advocate for the environment um, while at Kane University. I actually got my um, BS in environmental biology. And I actually chose that because I wanted to um, advocate for humanitarianism. Um, I wanted people to be able to have equal access to water, equal access to um, clean air and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's actually why I chose my major. Um, and what's beautiful about the Institute is I could expand more than just the environment. Yes, and, and, and we certainly have, haven't we? Yes, okay. absolutely. You know, indeed, what we've, uh, our first uh, effort at the Lesniak Institute was to conduct a public forum with uh, high school students uh, from throughout Union County and beyond, uh, talking about gun violence and how to curb uh, gun violence in our society. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know what was so interesting about that event is that there was actually a student representative of the NRA there. Yes, Do you remember there that? Yes, was, yes. And he was very articulate. Yeah. And what impressed me as well is all the other students, they didn't jump all over them. They acted very civilly. There was a very, very positive discussion about uh, gun violence and, and gun safety. Absolutely, that's so important to mm -hmm. advocacy is having both sides of the spectrum shown and being able to um, you know, show both sides of the argument. Don't you think Congress can learn <laughs> from these students that we had <laughs> uh, at our, our forum? Okay, and how about the, the Laramie Project? You were part of that. Yes, um, yeah, so that was, uh, that was a great production that Elizabeth Public Schools put on. Um, it had me in tears. I Had me in tears <laughs> also, yes. Yeah, I remember. They did a great job um, of portraying that event that happened in Laramie. Um, was it Wisconsin? Somewhere out west, I know that. Somewhere out west. Yeah, yeah where that, um, that student was brutally beaten yes. um, because he was gay. Uh, and they did a great job of um, showing the dialect that happened in the town, what happened um, to the town because of that specific yes. event. Um, exactly, yeah. So, uh, and then we moved on to animal welfare, huh? Yes. That, that was a huge project. Talk to us about the, the Humane State license plate. Yeah, um, so that was really fun. We got a lot of youth involved in that, um, a lot of students from throughout New Jersey. Um, so we had two components, the license plate design and then the essay contest. Um, so for the license plate des design contest, we had 146 students show us uh, their designs. And the winner, Kelly Q, uh, her design was beautiful. It had that bear on it, it oh, had the elephant. Yes. Um, and uh, the puppy to showcase all of the things that New Jersey has been doing to um, improve the animal welfare. And how about the essays? That was not an easy decision to make. It was not, not at all. I couldn't make it. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I, I'm reading these essays and I'm saying one is better. I can't choose who's going to be the winners. We had six finalists, six winners. Right. And I, I gave up. I gave it to uh, Sarah and our, our board uh, to go over these because they were so good. They showed such passion and interest and understanding of the issues involved in animal welfare. They did. They certainly did. Um, it, was, it was very hard to choose, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, all of the students put their heart and souls into those essays. I could, I could definitely tell. We have a lot mm -hmm. of animal advocates in New Jersey. And you were also very instrumental going back to your environmental roots, right? Thank you. In the forum that we had that engaged uh, college students from throughout New Jersey. Yes. Talk, talk to us about that. Yeah, so that was Let's Clear the Air, um, our funny little name we put on it. What was that? Let's Clear the Air. Let's Clear the Air. Yes, uh, so we were talking about air quality in that New Jersey. That air is not very clear, is it? Definitely not. Um, and I mean, this is, this is a site that you can see in a lot of different places in New Jersey. Um, this and the, the truck emissions um, yes. is pretty crazy, pretty wild. So uh, we had that event to talk about air quality in New Jersey. We brought together a bunch of really pivotal environmental leaders, um, and they held roundtable discussions, little intimate discussions, where everyone talked about um, specific things they could do in New Jersey to improve the air quality. So um, also an issue very dear 
dear to my heart. Um, I happen to have been very fortunate and very proud of the fact that uh, the laws that I sponsored in the legislature are the most progressive laws in the entire nation to clean up our environment. But there's still a lot more work to get done. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our president uh, is rolling back the emission standards. And that's one of the things that prompted, uh, prompted this the discussion. We have, I uh, live in a city of Elizabeth and in the Ironbound section, particularly in Newark areas of Jersey City, Bayonne. Trucks line up um, and, and they're just idling there to get into the port. And this type of smoke is, is coming out of the, the back of their trucks. Have you ever been behind one of these trucks on the road? It's not healthy and it's not pleasant. And what we have to do, what we're going to do, and I'll be talking to um, uh, our legislators uh, as we have. And that's one thing that we can do with the Institute. What we're going to talk about in our next segment is how you can get involved and help the Lesniak Institute advocate for the causes that, that you believe in. What do, we, what do we have about that? Well, how, how, can we, how can the listening audience participate in, um, in our advocacy and make it their advocacy? Sure, this is my favorite thing that I'm working on right now, um, and that is to drive action for every single one of our sub-causes within these four causes we have here. So on our website, people can directly contact their legislator. Um, we have a button for each one of the sub-causes um, for people to take action, and then people will input their zip code and it'll identify their local legislators. Um, and then they'll see the contact information for all of their legislators. They can choose to call them, to write them snail mail, to visit them, or they can send them an email. Um, so we've put a button right there for people to send an email to their legislator, and it's pre-written. Um, so we have a recommend recommended email that people will send to their legislator. But only recommended. We, right. al we also recommend that they put their own views in there. Yeah, to personalize it. That's very important. Very important. I know as a legislator, if I just got a form letter, it was not nearly as impactful as when somebody took the time and made the effort to put their own words uh, in that message. So, uh, Sarah, you're doing a great job. Thank you. We still have uh, a lot of work that we're going to do that we will be talking about. So stay tuned for the next segment. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. The Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub, with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Welcome back to the Ray of Hope show, where we're discussing the Lesniak Institute for American Leadership with Sarah Mack. So Sarah, 
tell me and tell them, well, I know, <laughs> but tell the audience what makes the Lesniak Institute unique. Sure. So what sets us apart, in my mind, is that we drive action for, for everything that we can possibly do. Um, a lot of different organizations, they strive to raise awareness, and it, it just stops there, um, where we take it to the next step. We want everything to have an action item to follow up with mm -hmm. so that people can learn advocacy firsthand. So um, what's next on the agenda for the Lesniak Institute to advocate for? Um, well, right now we're doing, we're big into puppy mills. Uh, we're trying to ban them. We have a petition on our website right now. That's a picture of a puppy mill right there. Right here, yes. So, um, so uh, let me talk a little bit about puppy mills. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for permission to do that. <laughs> so, uh, when, when I, way back when, when I was in the Senate, uh, uh, which wasn't that long ago, uh, I have legis had legislation banning puppy mills. A puppy mill... Uh, which ex puppy mills exist throughout throughout the country, and basically they breed, breed, and breed. And it's not just puppies; it's also cats. Uh, they overbreed in horrible conditions, uh, dogs and cats, which oftentimes wind wind up on the streets, having to be euthanized, abandoned, or destroyed. Uh, so uh, I actually passed legislation banning uh, the, any uh, imports into the state of New Jersey uh, of puppy mills, uh, but unfortunately Governor Christie vetoed it. I do not believe that Governor Murphy will, will veto it this time ar around when we get it going again. And since then, uh, the state of California, states of California and, and Maryland um, have not only banned the imports of uh, of these, uh, from these puppy mills, these overbreeding, unhealthy uh, 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 operations that just turn out, turn out, turn out dogs and, and cats that wind up being abandoned and abused and destroyed. Uh, they actually, and that's what we're going to try to do here in New Jersey, um, only allow the commercial sale of a dog or a cat from a rescue organization. So what we'll be doing is providing homes for dogs and cats that have been, uh, have suffered uh, as a result of this uh, breeding cycle that we're going to put an end to. And we're also going to regulate uh, rescue operations to make sure that they operate within the confines of, uh, of, of, of what is good practices for, uh, for rescuing dogs and cats. I am the proud owner of two, uh, two rescues, uh, Penny and Sammy. They're very cute, I've met them. And Sammy, Sammy threw me for a loop uh, recently when um, she chewed her way through a slat oh my gosh. In, in, in our backyard. And, and I looked and I saw that um, she didn't eat her breakfast. And she always eats her breakfast. I said, where is she? I looked, she was gone. She ate the slat instead? She, well, no, <laughs> she, well, she chewed the slat and then she snuck out and I just combed the neighborhood for hours, hours. And it was cold. I was concerned that, um, that she would freeze to death. Uh, indeed, uh, when she was rescued, she was, um, there was a litter of five uh, two of, uh, of the litter uh, had already frozen to death. Oh my God. So uh, that went through my mind again. But luckily, uh, people in the neighborhood saw her. She's such a friendly dog. She was having a ball mm -hmm. going up to students. <laughs> and meanwhile, you know, I'm worrying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and she was having a grand old time. But they, they called the Elizabeth uh, Animal Shelter uh, they, um, and, and took, her, took her there. I went to the Hillside Animal Shelter and the Elizabeth Animal Shelter, and when I saw Sammy there, my, my eyes lit up. So what can um, our audience do uh, in order to advance legislation in New Jersey? Because we got stymied last time uh, to not only ban puppy mills, but only uh, allow the sale, commercial sale of animals uh, who, who have been rescued. What, what can they do? Yeah, so we have a petition right now on our website, um, and people can sign the petition and follow up with an email to their legislator letting them know that they signed the petition. 
Um, and that's a great way, you know, for advocates, yes. you know, everyone who's passionate about animal welfare, passionate about ending puppy mills, um, to take an action. So, and, and you make a good point here, because um, petitions are too often, I, I could speak, uh, again, in my experience as a legislator, petitions are too often uh, a waste of time, uh, because you can get anyone to sign a petition, and politicians know that. Indeed, when, and one of the things we're going to be doing as well um, is uh, banning the use of gestation crates. Right. Uh, a gestation crate is um, a, a confined space where pregnant sows, and they're pregnant 80% of their lives, they're confined to these cages where they can't even turn, stand up or move around 80% of their lives. Uh, again, something that I was able to get passed the legislature, but Governor Christie vetoed it. We're going to rely on Governor Murphy to sign it. But the point about petitions is working with the Humane Society of New Jersey, uh, they were able to get over 100,000 names on the petition. Submitted it to uh, Governor Christie, didn't matter. Didn't matter, he vetoed the bill, and he was able to do that because he knew that just because someone signs a petition, right. it doesn't mean they really care or are heartfelt about the issue. And that's why um, our petitions also ask for action to be taken. Is that correct? Absolutely. And I'll tell you something. I bet everyone who signs this puppy mill petition is very, very passionate about this issue. But they have to, sh yes, but they have to show it. Right. The, yeah, let their legislators know. Yes. Action. Turning your, your passion into action is what the Lesniak Institute is all about. That's right. So, um, so we have a lot of work to do uh, at the Lesniak Institute and on the Ray of Hope show, uh, where we hope that you will continue to tune in um, and not only watch the show, which we want you to do for sure, but to take action, to follow your passion. And um, what do you uh, see the future of the Lesniak Institute? No, let me, let me change that question, okay? Okay. Let's talk about the class I'm teaching. All right. Okay, which you'll be covering for me from time to time. You, you were at the first class at Kane University. Tell us about that. It was wonderful. Um, it's a small, intimate class. Um, and each one of them is going to be able to advocate for a cause of their, their choosing. Mm -hmm. um, and already they're starting to think of them. I remember one uh, mentioned LGBTQ rights in right. the military. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a great cause. And another one at, wants to advocate for education, yes. uh, education equality throughout New Jersey. Um, so I have great hope for this class. Yes, as do I. And hopefully that uh, we may even expand this to have a, um, a degree in advocacy. That would be I amazing. Think, I think that's what uh, America, again, needs. We need more people participating in government. Because when a person does something, picks up a phone, sends an email, demonstrates, uh, though our elected officials will, will take notice. And maybe, we won't, and maybe we won't have so much gridlock. And maybe we'll actually get these causes uh, uh, taken care of. So that's what we're all about here uh, on the Ray of Hope show. That's what we're all about at the Lesniak Institute for American Leadership. So tune in uh, to this show, previous episodes, uh, live streaming on YouTube. And you can also uh, suggest uh, topics for us to cover and guests for us to have uh, by going on the Lesniak Institute of American Leadership, the Lesniak Institute.com uh, website, and you can participate as well. Maybe we'll have you on as a guest. So keep in touch. We'll see you next time.